So this video is going to explain why my portfolio was the single most important reason on why I got a job. So if you didn't watch my other video, it talks about how I got eight internship offers in three months. Let's start from the beginning. I started applying in December 2022, and this is about the time where I made my portfolio. At the start, I just had one project on it, and this was the project I did for my Google Data Analytics certification. It was a Capstone project and wasn't that good, but back then it was the only thing I had, so I put it on my portfolio. And then I started to do a couple more projects, and I think I made a decent portfolio. I don't think it was the best one out there, but it was enough for employers to understand where I was and what skill set I had. Now, let's get into why I think you should make a portfolio. So number one, obviously it helps you stand out. Out of the pool of 600 or 700 applicants that are applying for your job, when you make a portfolio, you'll be one of the few where employers can clearly understand your skill set with trust, authenticity, and belief. It also displays your unique thinking skills. So with my portfolio personally, I like to use a lot of comments and remarks so that employers understand what I'm thinking or my thought process. And, you know, I explain the questions I ask and why I ask them. This obviously reduces the workload of the employer. They don't have to dig so much to decide if you're a worthy candidate. In my opinion, this allows you to make unique conversations during your interviews, which is what I did. And I'll explain that later on. Next, it helps you show your work. So with any career, any job, showing your work is important. This helps you show that you're creative and you're unique. Next, it also helps increase trust, credibility, and authenticity. So there's numerous amounts of research and studies that show that if you show your work, you're automatically going to be more trusted, more credible, and more authentic. This is because people can actually verify that you know what you know, you have the skills you say you have, and you've done the work you said you've done. And like I said before, it's a good conversation starter. So for me personally, I use this, my portfolio, as a conversation in every single interview I had. I directed them to my portfolio every single time they asked me a question. I directed them back to my own projects, the projects I worked with. And the reason for that is because I knew that projects in and out. I understood those projects. I spent hours on those projects. So I understood why I made the choices I did and I understood what I could change, what I would change and what I did well. So if you're like me and you get nervous during interviews, this reduces your nerves, calms you down. And in fact, I think it, it levels the playing field. It makes you level to them. Now you have a say in what questions they ask and you kind of direct the conversation a little more. And personally, I like showing my work because I can get feedback. I like showing my portfolio to my friends, my peers, my professors, and I get feedback from that so that I can improve. And I also know what I did well and what I can keep doing. This also helps me grow over time. So Looking back now, there's a lot of things that I would change from my previous projects. There's a lot of things that I would do differently. And that's also because I've developed new skills over time, but that's a good thing though. So now when I go into interviews, I can kind of show how my mindset has changed or what my thought process is now versus then. And this helps them gauge my learning process and my curiosity and my willingness to learn over time. You know, continuous learning is one of my values and I have that displayed on my portfolio. I think everyone should have a mission statement and a set of values on their portfolio. This helps employers better understand who you are as a person and if you're a good fit for their team. Now let's get into how to create a portfolio. Portfolio. So there's a free option and there's a paid option. And if you're like me and you want to spend all the money to look more professional, you can choose the paid option. It costs me about $150 a year to have my domain name and my hosting service. I use Bluehost, but I've tried Ghost and Hostinger. I think Bluehost is the most worth it for me as of right now, but you could go with any of these options. There's so many out there. As for domain names, you can use Google to get domain names, or you can use other services like Cheap Domain or other things. As for the free options, I recommend YouTube, Kaggle, and GitHub. So a lot of people go to Kaggle and GitHub, but they overlook YouTube. The reason I said YouTube is because YouTube is a live video version of your projects. You can show your thought process live with a video. And a lot of people are visual learners. And me personally, I like learning things visually. So if I were to go learn a tutorial, I would opt for YouTube over anything else. By showing your work on YouTube, you can one better show employers what your thought process is, how you do code. And it's more credible in my opinion because you're doing the code live. So there's less barriers there. And with YouTube, it's easier for you to gain an audience. You can help others, you can inspire others, you can learn from others, true YouTube comments. The other options are Kaggle and GitHub. I personally like Kaggle because Kaggle is more designated or designed to data science and data analytics. GitHub is more for software engineering in my opinion. So I lean towards Kaggle. Kaggle to me is pretty simple to use because I just use my code that I would for R and Python, put it on Kaggle and then add more comments and remarks. Kaggle allows me to have a notebook and I could export that notebook and keep it on my personal device at any time. GitHub is an incredibly useful and skillful tool as a data scientist too. I personally use GitLab for my internship and I learned a little bit of GitHub and Git back in my computer science days where I used to do software engineering a lot. In fact, I personally know that GitHub allows you to make a custom portfolio but using their GitHub domain name. This is slightly less professional in my opinion, but it's not a bad alternative. In fact, if I was an employer, I wouldn't give it a second thought. I would just click the hyperlink. All right, now let's get into how to use your portfolio to your advantage.
So like I said before, a portfolio is a good conversation starter. I typically like talking about my portfolio in every single interview. This helps me level the playing field and direct questions directly to my portfolio so that I'm more confident. I know how to answer these questions better. I like to link my portfolio. In fact, I highly recommend linking your portfolio on your resume. This helps employers get more information about you. With the restrictions of a one-page resume, there's not much you can put on it. But when you link your portfolio to your resume, essentially you've made a funnel system where employers can click and get more information if they wanted to. So if you pass that ATS scan from the beginning and employers take your resume and actually read it, they might click the portfolio link and learn more about you. In fact, I recently made a video on how to make a creative and unique resume that helps you pass the ATS scan through a funnel system. I also recommend putting your web portfolio on your student profile, on your LinkedIn profile, and also on your handshake profile. This can direct traffic from your social media profiles to your web portfolio. Almost every single employer will check your LinkedIn profile when they're considering you. And when they have a chance to click your web portfolio link, they can get to know more information about you. So that's a pretty smart way to present yourself to employers in a meaningful way. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I do plan on making a part two where I directly teach you how to make a web portfolio I like to be very intentional with my work and how I present myself to employers. So when I make a web portfolio and when I design my resume, I like to put my most useful and most important information at the top and then sort it descendingly after. This overall helps employers navigate your web portfolio and resume in a more efficient manner. They take less time to learn more about you and decide if you're a good candidate or not. After all, the whole process is you trying to sell yourself. So if you're smart and intentional about how you sell yourself, there's a higher chance of you getting the job. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.